Now, there's another energy within your body which must be activated. It's called the activation of the grid within our physical body. What does it mean? The grid, G-R-I-D. We have an energy called the grid. <clears throat> Most time when we pray, when we meditate, when we feel good, <clears throat> we give intention, affirmation, but very rarely we are able to manifest in our everyday life because we have not anchored this energy into the grid within us. If you look at the earth, all the major structures of the earth, pyramids, Angkor Wat Temple, St. Paul's Cathedral, all the major structures are on grid lines. So when you anchor something into the grid, it becomes a natural part of reality because everything in our life comes from earth. And we are earth. We are the elements. So the earth exists within us. So when you anchor any energy, whatever you want to create, or a prayer, or an affirmation, or a good thought, to manifest in your physical reality and experience it, you must anchor into the grid in your physical body. And the grid exists underneath your belly button. And there are 12 grids. This is the meaning in ancient times. In India, even I got it done, when you, before you start to school, you will go to some teachers, and they will take your, one of your finger, middle finger most time, and they will write on the sand. Did you, did you get it done? Have you heard about it? Yeah. What does it mean? Come back to the earth. Come back to the earth. This is your reality. You must get in touch with the earth. And when you anchor into that grid, which is represents the earth within your physical body, then the manifestations will happen much faster. And there are 12 grids represented by 12 masters. And these masters contain certain specific vibrational frequency and certain qualities. Again, part of Mahakundalini work. The other important part of Mahakundalini is every human being carries poverty, consciousness, DNA. You know that? There are many DNA which need to be deactivated. We have 144 strands of DNA. Not what scientists say, 12 layers. And the 10 layers they call junk DNA. No, we have 144 strands throughout our entire being, etheric body. And, and there are many DNA which need to be deactivated. And one DNA need to be deactivated is the DNA of fear of God. And that's right in our stomach area. One other important DNA to be deactivated is the DNA of poverty consciousness. Again, that exists underneath our belly button, two inches below. And when this DNA is fully active, it's active for most people, we will always have challenges with money. Or even if you make money, it will never stay with you. Money runs your life. Like there is a saying in India, you know, Kai sabi pai sabi now. Doesn't matter. If I have to cheat you, tell lies to you, make money. It runs people's lives. Because, as you know, many people try to bribe God. Is it not, brother? It's a barter trade. I happened to be in India last year, and it had the demonetization day on November 8th. I happened to land at 8 o'clock. So I was in the airport in Kolkata waiting for my baggage, and somebody said, have you heard the, we had a very big news. So I, I asked them, did any terrorism happen? He said, no, it's much bigger than that. But he wouldn't tell me. I said, okay. He said, do you have any change? I said, I have some money. No, he said, you must get a small change. I said, no, I don't care. It's okay. But he didn't tell me. Then I heard about it. And then in the next few days, I was going to Babaji's cave in Rani Keth. And there were some business people with me in the van. And the whole talk was how to beat the system. I'm not joking. How to beat the system. And then, on the way back from Rani, uh, Babaji's cave, 
We stopped at a temple called Neem Karoli Baba something something. And there were arti going on. <clears throat> and this business person, they have, this guy is a very big business, multi crore business, okay? The guy just like this, as soon as he had arti, falls down in front of Ganesha. I want to say how fake you are. And then they went to the three, you know, there are, there are three rooms and everywhere like this. Then on the way back, again, same thing. How to beat the system? Whom to bribe? And they were told, I know this manager, and he take 21 person. No, 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 23 person. Like, you know, how to change the money. Yesterday, somebody asked me, will I have Kundalini awakening? I just knew. You know what Babaji said? He wants to have Kundalini awakening so that he can make more money. One lady in Bhuvanesha told me, I want to have Kundalini awakening so that I can make 100 crores. So, our idea of Kundalini awakening or anything is how to make more zeros in the bank. <clears throat> Won't you agree, Sushma, many times? Yeah, one, this is why. When this is very active DNA, money runs our life. On the other spectrum, we still have money, but now are enough, now we're satisfied, and you're afraid of losing the money. How to hide under the bed? Will the taxman come and cheat me? Take it away? All is fearful. We must deactivate this DNA. And this DNA act <coughs> is represented by a black lotus. We must deactivate the DNA. Only then you will be able to have much more freedom in one's life. And you will not, money will not run your life Passion in your life will come forth, and naturally, money is a natural byproduct when you fully move into your passion. Money will come to you, but money is just a byproduct. Money is just other energy. You will have more energy when you deactivate this. Very important part of DNA, how to act, deactivate this. So there are many, many, many layers you must integrate all these layers and activate many of these. Then you'll be able to hold this frequency within you and then make it a reality. But activation of the Maha Kundalini of 12 layers is not the end result. Yes, when you fully integrate the 12 layers, you will break out of reincarnation cycle. But then you have the next layer if you want to go. The next layer is Avatar Kundalini. The Kundalini of Sai Baba, Jesus, Master Buddha. And we can activate this avatar Kundalini because the planetary vibration will support and you will not die. And how do you do it again? How to activate the 12 layers? Simple breathing technique. We we'll have to show you one breathing technique. In your body, you have the pineal gland. Is it not, sister? Here. Represented by the spiritual consciousness. When you awaken the pineal gland, you awaken spiritually, more of light. You also have a gland in your body, in your hip area. When you activate this gland, you are able to materially create in the life. That means spiritually abundant, materially abundant. As above, so below. We have come here to master life. We cannot run away. We live in a world where energy is needed. We must master money too. Now we're attached to money, but mastering money is a very important part of spiritual growth. The more money you have, you can do much more things. How about making money, millions of dollars, and throwing it away? You are not attached to anything, but creation becomes fun. You are in your passion. So when you activate this gland, and you activate the pineal gland simultaneously, you are becoming materially abundant, spiritually abundant. It's not difficult. It just requires practice, dedication for less than one year, and you'll be able to manifest quantumly in your life. Not only money, every area of your life will shift. Now, we would like you to open your palm like this. Hey, $10,000 question. Secret, no. 
It is right in your hip area. This gland is called wing, wing gland. That, that means you have freedom. When you, wing means you have put on the wings, is it not? Your true freedom comes when you are able to create what you want in your life. Is it not? When you are able to create what you want, you have freedom. Otherwise, you don't have freedom, truly no freedom. Is it not, dear one? It is in your hip area, in your spinal column. When you activate it, this gland will open, shape like a wing, two wings forming. A, and when you work with it every day, this gland will start opening up fully, and the wings will start moving up your spinal column all the way, come and set it down underneath your shoulders. That means I have put the wings onto myself, and I can fly now. I'm also fully alive spiritually. I'm fully alive materially. So the money concern or other material concern does not rule our life. I move into my passion. I move into service to humanity. So when you fully activate the two layers of Kundalini, your life completely shifts. It becomes service to humanity. Whole life becomes service. Service every way. Not only materially, time-wise, everything. Every moment you are in service. Through your word, a gesture, a kind thought, a look. Of course, money too, completely. But naturally, you will have more and more energy in your life, more and more abundance, more and more money. So when you awaken this full Kundalini Mahala Kundalini, you will have freedom in your heart to manifest, create whatever you want, and move into a higher reality where this feeling of oneness every moment. You will lose interest in spiritual practice, not doing any particular thing, but honoring the divine every time, everywhere. So you will go to temple, you will see God in that form. You will see God in a butterfly, in a flower, in a rainbow, in a dog. You will say, God manifesting in every part. And slowly, you start disidentifying with yourself with anything. You will say, I am not my bank balance, I am not my car, I am not my house, I am, I am not this, I am not that. I am the ever-changing, formless energy. Truly, we are that. How can we identify with anything? We cannot, we should not. That comes from a place of ego. I am the ever-changing, formless particles of light, which was birthed from the heart of God itself. So in that level, what happened? There is no identification. There is no success. There is no failure. There is no praise. There is no love. Nothing. Are you ready for it? Why do we ask for, why do we seek validation from other people? Because we don't have faith in ourselves. Now, to fully activate the Kundalini, there are certain steps. And these steps are not easy to follow. Layer one represents full responsibility in your life for everything. Can you take responsibility for everything in your life, sister? 100 percent. Now that will be done in the workshop. We are just, today we just theoretical aspect, which takes a lot. Can you accept everything? Take, can you take responsibility for 100 percent of your life? Most people know. Dear one, life is an effect, not a cause. It's very, very difficult to accept 100 percent responsibility in our life. Let's say a baby is killed, or raped, or kidnapped, or somebody has an accident. People say, how can it happen? A poor man was bicycling, he got hit by a truck, he died. How can you take responsibility for what happened to his life? Quite difficult. We will say, theoretically, yes, I can. But on a practical level, where, how about your sister? Can you take responsibility 100%? Only when you take, how about you, Mr. Sinha? 
Can you take 100% responsibility what's happening in your life? 100%. That's the first layer of Kundalini. When you take full responsibility for your life, for everything, you will be able to integrate this first layer. First layer represents the energy of the earth within us. Second layer represents full acceptance of what's happening in your life and other people's lives. This is very difficult. We have value judgment when we see television or somebody else or anything. Can you accept other people's lives, sister? How about you, Gupta? Maybe difficult, very difficult for you. 100% you accept other people as they are. Your, mother, your daughter in law, 100%. Can you? When there is maybe, it only means 20%. Dear one, you want to go up, or you want to stay in the same space? You came here because you want to go up, you know? So you must, you know, 100% responsibility and acceptance of you and others as they are. So does it mean we have to accept a bad behavior from other person? Of course not. But we understand this person is forgotten who they are. They're acting out in their particular way. But I can say, I do not accept your behavior. But I also understand that you have forgotten who you are. And I remove myself from that place. So you can stay in this space. But I remove from this space. I step out. Not an easy task. How about you? Very difficult. Actually, all of us, dear one, we have value judgment when we watch the television news, is it not? What's happening in the world right now? Deep polarization. Is it not? Who is right? One person is trying to make other person right or wrong. Look at the political parties all over the world. America, what's happening? Everywhere, in India too, everywhere. Deep polarization. And people fighting who is right, who is wrong. So acceptance, very, very important. Acceptance of your life, acceptance of others, because this is a sixth layer, also connected to this layer. It needs to happen as it needs to happen at the present moment. Not an easy task. Third means solace. Fourth means contentment. Not an easy task. Contentment. I'm content with what's in my life. I have everything in my life, what I need to go to the next level of my life. If you look at our life, we have every moment which can take us to the next. We may want something, but wanting and needing is something different. The other layers are giving up. Giving up of what? Praise, love, hate, all, nothing. Stepping out of that. Again, not easy. We as human beings always seek validation from other people because we don't trust ourselves. We don't love ourselves. Can we come back to self-validation? Not an easy task. An employee, he wants a pat from his boss and say, you did a good job. A child wants validation from the parents. A lady wants validation from her husband or anybody. We seek validation all the time because we don't trust ourselves. How about in Ipadas? You're pretty good generally. How about you? Far away. Far away. <laughs> one? Again, not an easy task. The next layer, knowing that you are not doing anything, it's just coming through you and you are just coming through you. So you are not attached to any outcome. No disappointment, no expectations. Can we live life without expectations? Who said yes? 
not easy. How about your sister? Even spiritually, we say, I want to have this vision, I want to have this, I want to have that. Very, very, very difficult to live without expectations. But in that, there is no disappointment because expectation is a killer. We want to have an expected outcome in a particular way, the way we think it should ha happen in our life. That means we are blocking the universal flow because we want an outcome as we want it to happen. Because we are afraid what will happen when we allow the spirit, the unknown factor comes into it. Spirit lives in the present moment, whereas our mind always lives in the past. And we want to have an outcome based on the past experience. We have mentioned this several times. Let's say you are hungry in the lunch time, okay? You will say, what should we eat? Immediately, your mind will go into all the times you had lunch and bring that memory back into you in a nanosecond. And you will say, maybe I want to eat this today food. Maybe I want to eat pizza. I want to eat something else. But if you ask your soul, what should I eat now? The answer will most probably will be very different because the soul will tell you what you need at this present time in your life. See, there's a huge difference. Again, this layer. The final layer is simple. There is no past, there is no present, there is no future. There's nothing. I am not my body. I am not my mind. I am not even my soul. I am something bigger than that. Something bigger. 